perhaps even in a different department. He said, I'll look into that. He, while we were driving back to the hotel, he said that he would show me where the National Restaurant Association offices were. He parked the car down the block. I thought that we were going to go into the offices so that he could show me around. At that time, I had on a black pleated skirt, a suit jacket, and a blouse. He had on a, a suit with his, shirt op with his shirt open. But instead of going into the offices, he suddenly reached over and he put his hand on my leg, <coughs> under my skirt, and reached for my genitals. He also grabbed my head and brought it towards his crotch. I was very, very surprised and very shocked. I said, what are you doing? I, you know I have a boyfriend. This isn't what I came here for. Mr. Kane said, you want a job, right? I asked him to stop, and he did. I asked him to take me back to my hotel, which he, he did right away. When I returned to New Jersey, where I was staying with my boyfriend that Mr. Kane had been I told, when I, was staying, when I returned back to New Jersey where I was staying, I told my boyfriend Mr. Kane had been very sexually inappropriate with me, and shortly thereafter I told another friend of mine who has been a mentor the same thing. I didn't tell them the details because, quite frankly, I was very embarrassed uh, that Mr. Kane had been sexually inappropriate to me. The last time that I saw Mr. Kane, actually, was about a month ago. I had been invited to the Tea Party Conference um, sponsored by WIND Chicago Radio in Chicago. I actually didn't know he was going to be there until the night before when my girlfriend told me. I went up to him and asked him, do you remember me? I, want, I, I guess I wanted to see if he was going to be man enough to own up to what he had done some 14 years ago. He acknowledged that he remembered me from the foundation, but he kind of looked uncomfortable. And he said nothing as he had it was whisked away for his speech by his handlers. During his speech, he had that same infectious presence that we have come to know and, and command as he did when I heard him speak for the first time 14 years ago at the NRA. But as I sat there in the audience, I kept wondering to myself, has he done to other woman, women what he had done to me and whether anyone was going to speak up about it? I really hoped for his sake that in his candidacy that mine was not, that mine was an isolated incident and that he had not exhibited those behaviors with other women. I didn't file a complaint against Mr. Kane as some of the other women did because I wasn't employed by the foundation when this occurred. But now I'm coming forward to give a face and a voice to those women who cannot or for whatever reasons do not wish to come forward and on behalf of all women who are sexually harassed in the workplace but do not come out of fear of retaliation or in public humiliation. I really didn't want to be here today and wouldn't have been here if it had not been for the three other women who have alleged sexual harassment against, against Mr. Kane. I want you, Mr. Kane, to come clean just admit what you did. Admit you were inappropriate to people. America is in a, tr and, and then move forward. America is in a horrible turmoil, as we all know. We need a leader who can set an example, which exemplifies the standards of a good person and moral character. Mr. Kane, I implore you, make this right so that you and the country can move forward and focus on the real issues at hand. Thank you. Okay, wait, wait, excuse me, wait, wait, before, wait, before we answer questions. Hand up, two separate. Just a minute, just one second. I just had a gun.